For most of us, retirement seems a strange time to embark on a solo career, but that's precisely what the artist John Allen has done. Born in 1934 in Matlock, not so very far from the Peak District, he first worked hawking coal for the family business and as a dental technician before finally realising his dreams of a career in art and design, studying weaving at Camberwell School of Art and then the Royal College of Art in London. Since then, he has come a very long way, juggling professorships, uh, consultancies with the likes of the V&A, and worked with some of the largest fashion houses in the world, like Loewe. It was a little over 20 years ago that he decided to embrace a solo career of his own with his celebrated woven carpets. With his 90th birthday on the horizon, he has recently completed his most recent collection, Woven England. I'm delighted to be sharing it with you today. This is an exhibition that is, in a way, very long in the making. After a lifetime of promoting the arts of weaving, of knitting, of printed textiles, John has traced back to his childhood roots uh, a love of the countryside growing up near the Peak District. This is a collection of 20 carpets and it gathers together beauty spots from around the English coastlands, from areas that he's familiar with, from some new sites that he's since discovered, and brings them together in a kind of portrait of the English countryside. It'll also come as no surprise, looking around the carpets in this exhibition, that John is a big fan of colour. An image like this, this beautiful autumnal woodland scene, would start in situ. John likes to visit these places and spend time absorbing the atmosphere, working out how he feels in a place like this. He'll often paint naturalistic gouache studies while he's there and take photographs, and they're brought back to his home in London where the real magic happens in his beautiful northeast facing studio. It's here that those initial colour impressions are transformed into this beautiful bright tapestry we see in front of me, where John thinks about how he felt at the time can be evoked in the choice of colours, the balance of colours across a carpet like this. It's then that John's little colour compositions are translated to his technical weaver's graphs. This is the really complex part of the process. A large graph the same size as the carpet itself is drawn out and every single square will denote a thread of colour. That's no mean feat when you get up close to a carpet like this and you realise how many different colours John is working with. 10, 15, sometimes 20 different kinds of threads and a single image to give this beautiful explosion of colour. The locations across this collection of carpets are almost quintessentially English, especially focused around the coastal areas. We've got the fantastically recognisable white faces of the Seven Sisters Cliffs along the south coast and the chalk figures of the Wilmington Man and the Cern Abbas Giant. But it's far away from these beauty spots that these carpets are actually woven in Nepal by teams of weavers in the settlement of Muktinath at 15 and a half thousand feet just below the snow line in the Himalayas. It's a collaboration that John has with now two teams of weavers there that has enabled him to expand his vision in carpet weaving. It's thanks to his own expertise in weaving that he's able to exploit the techniques and teach some new ones to the weavers there in Nepal. One of these you'll see a lot in this exhibition. For example, the art of cutting to separate colour areas in a carpet like this. Normally this is done with huge great shears just to clean the lines around the areas from one colour to another. But when John saw that weavers doing this, he realised here was a technique he could use to bring some three-dimensional texture and surface to these carpets. You'll see that he's asked the weavers to cut into the pile. It's a technique that has a wonderful double effect. 
On the one hand, it mimics the natural character of the English countryside around us. There's familiar ploughed lines and the hedgerows that delineate the fields that are now so familiar to us. But it's also a very clever way of cheating two colours from one thread. As you cut into the pile, the colour is invariably deeper and richer beneath the surface. A summer scene like this, looking over the farmlands to this little pink house on the horizon, might seem deceptively simple. The closer you get in, the more of these colours, this layering of textures you see, the more complex you realise it is. John has been working with these Nepalese teams for two decades now, and he's pretty well pushing them to the technical limits of what they can accomplish in their workshops. It's when you get up close to carpets like these that you see the incredible layering of threads, of textures, of surfaces going on. But John Allen is also a veteran collector of British modern art of the last hundred years. He has an extraordinary collection of pictures, paintings, drawings in his home, and that has helped him hone his eye over the years. A favourite artist of his is Patrick Herons, and I can see the influence of him uh, in, a, in a carpet like this, this beautiful woodland scene. Those very particular greens, purples, saffron yellows that you see in Patrick Herons paintings, John has gladly taken that palette and enlarged it here. It's only when you get up really close to a carpet like this and you see how John is taking two, three, four different colours of threads, placing them side by side, slowly shifting from one colour to another, that this fantastic scene starts to come to life. One of my favourite designs sits here on the back wall. It's of the Monsal Dale in the Peak District. You've got this fantastic viaduct running across the water and the peaks in the distance. It's an image that, for me, harks back to those fantastic British rail posters of the 1930s and 50s, or perhaps the shell posters commissioned from artists the likes of Sutherland and Paul Nash. I can almost see the words British rail plastered across the top of this carpet. It's one of John Allen's great talents that, like those poster designers, he's able to play with the kind of flat dimensions of the carpet and pull colours in and out so that what seems like a flat surface in front of you in this picture of the Peak District or on his carpets of clumps of trees, very reminiscent of Paul Nash, you have something that seems flat but starts to shift, giving this illusion of space all the time. Many of those artists were working at a time when we were being encouraged to travel and explore the country, to try the new motorways that were opening in the 1950s, to take the train for our holidays. Nowadays, it's a form of travel that I think is probably slowly disappearing. Our railways are underrun, our motorways are clogged up, and with the recent news of pollutants flowing into our waterways, the idea of going out and finding beauty spots like these is probably quite alien to us. We're more often driving into urban, sprawling city centres than we are used to driving out of them. So it's a delight to have someone like John Allen remind us that there really is beauty, there is splendour, there is joy to be found out there. And he's brought it here in the beautiful colour of these carpets. I'm delighted to have shared this work of John Allen's with you. I hope it's brought you as much joy and colour as it has us.